Oh, that's appropriate music for our next guest. Hello and good afternoon. It's time for the dealershipnews.com podcast where we learn about the who's happening in the automotive industry. I'm Kelly Kleiman, your master podcaster. And today we have a friend and one of the driving forces behind one of 2017's Vendors of the Year, dealerleads.com. There's a twist to that coming up. Tracy Castable, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. I hope you liked our choice of songs, the Cufflinks, Tracy. Yes, I had to smile when I heard it start. I know that song very well. <laughs> I was actually named after that song. Unbelievable. That's why I have my name. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, explain to us a little bit about your background, how you ended up with Dealer Leads, and have you always loved the auto industry, or did you just kind of find your way into it like so many of us? Right. Uh, that does happen quite a bit. Uh, well, let's see. My background, I have been in PR and marketing uh, pretty much since I moved to L.A. back in 1995. So in the beginning, obviously being L.A., it was mostly entertainment focused. I worked at a variety of networks and studios and agencies and whatnot, worked on a bunch of shows and dealt with a lot of talent, a lot of big personalities uh, and all of those skills that I learned have come in very handy working in automotive. Uh, we have some big personalities in this uh, realm as well. So basically, the way it went down, the switch from entertainment to automotive happened because uh, the show I was working on uh, eventually got canceled. So I was looking for another gig. And, you know, uh, entertainment's really fun, but there's a lot of drawbacks too. And so I didn't want to limit myself, so I kind of went wide with my search. And I was contacted by this intriguing company called Dealer Leads. Uh, came in and I sat down with the CEO and the COO at the time. Um, we had a great meeting. They told me what they were trying to do. Uh, I was really intrigued by the whole newness factor, that it was something nobody had ever done. It was a brand new company, and so they were looking for someone who could help them build it from scratch. Uh, they were specifically looking for someone to take over the uh, customer service arm of it and, again, build that from scratch. So. You know, I love being in charge. It's my favorite place to be. So uh, <laughs> when we had such a great meeting and they offered me the VP role, I said, yeah, let's do it. So I jumped in and I have been on a roller coaster ever since. Uh, so much fun, so much learning, which is truly my favorite thing uh, to do. I love to learn. Never, never stop. Um, and that's how I ended up in automotive. So I've just been building uh, since then. And I have a phenomenal crew now uh, to help me get stuff done, to help me service my clients. And things are have never looked better. So you started off uh, with dealer leads, but there's mm -hmm. some big changes taking place for you. And now you are part of dealer analytics. Would you care mm -hmm. to tell us about the good news and what you're doing over there? But before I do that, tell us about the good news. Then we're going to get into what you do do. And then I want to hear your elevator pitch. But first things first, tell us about the transition. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all right. Well, so because of the fact that Dealer Leads was trying to do something that nobody had ever done, and our CEO is a 30-year car guy, and you know he's been on the front lines, and what he did not want to do was just put together another junk company that just takes money and doesn't really deliver anything. He said, you know, enough is enough. We need quality. We need real help for these guys who are trying to make a living, uh, and he wanted it to be completely different than what they had experienced before. So when I looked at the landscape of the kind of customer service that these poor car guys were used to getting, I was sickened. I mean, it's basically an $8 an hour employee on the end of an 800 number who gets a day of training and that's who is your support person. They don't know anything, they're slow. They, it's just a nightmare to try and deal with those people. And I said, no, what our dealers want is an advocate. They want someone who's on their side, who's going to hold their hand through the whole thing. Um, and so that was my goal in putting together my crew. So uh, to start with myself, I was a one woman show to begin with. Uh, then when we got too many clients, I had to start bringing in people. So the main thing I wanted to do was make sure that the clients felt like they were truly in a partnership and being taken care of. So I have my people, all are Google Analytics certified. So they're extremely knowledgeable. They are experts when it comes to data analysis. I personally train every single person on my team for about four months. Um, it's very intensive. And they are not allowed on the phone with a client until they are perfect. And when we hire or when a client hires us, 
they get the name and direct phone number of that person. There's no 800 numbers, there's no, okay, we'll see what we can do, and two weeks later, nothing's been done. It's, hey, Tracy, can you do this for me? Yeah, no problem, it's done in a day. That's the kind of service that they have never experienced before. So naturally, after a few years of this, it blew their minds. They're, they're just not used to it. We had such a positive response to this that we actually decided there was a real need in the dealership community for an advocate like this, someone who will help you keep track of what's going on in your website, fix your JavaScript errors, make sure your quality scores are up to par, plus analyze your data and make sure that you're spending the money in an efficient, um, productive way. So we've taken our customer service branch of dealer leads and we've spun it into a brand new company called Dealer Analytics. Let's so talk. We basically oh, act sorry. as digital consultants for the clients, not just uh, in charge of the dealer leads program, but we can advise on all of their digital spends. For those who are confused between Google Analytics and being Google Analytics certified, Analytics certified, and Google AdWords certified, I know the difference. You know the difference. Can you explain to some of the folks out there who might not know the difference? Sure. Um, well, AdWords is specifically for advertising online. So it's a totally different animal. It's, you know, you're bidding on keywords and trying to get your ads to show up where you can get clicks for people who are searching. Analytics is basically the data analysis arm of that. So any website can put a Google Analytics code in their HTML and then all of the data from every single click that happens on their website will be recorded in Google Analytics. Uh, who sent that person to the website, uh, where that person lives, how long they stayed on the site. You can look at every single page they went to. Uh, the granular detail is phenomenal in Google Analytics. And so this is what we use to qualify the sources of traffic uh, that dealerships are, are paying to have from a variety of vendors. Some are amazing, some are horrible, and there's a whole bunch in between. Which, which so we'll that's really the difference. Uh, there you, which we'll get into in a second. I don't want, this is one of my favorite questions I ask everybody. I, I, I could have probably bypassed it, but I'm going to throw it at you. Don't mean to b backtrack, but I want to hear an elevator pitch. Let's say you're in an elevator with the president of a large dealer group. You've got mm -hmm. 30 seconds to deliver and get them on board. Three, two, one, go. Okay, well, first of all, <laughs> I don't sell. I talk to people. Okay. I, don't, I don't talk at them. I talk with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I have found that trying to take the knowledge out of your head and shove it into somebody else's head, you're going to get a lot of resistance because people True. are bombarded all the time. Mm -hmm. If you approach it as a Q&A with the person and get them to think it through in their own head and come up with the answers on their own, you have a lot better chance of making them understand. So... With all of that said, mm -hmm. my pitch would be, you know, once I find out that this person is in the automotive business, I was like, I would say something like, oh, wow, so you probably have a huge digital marketing spend. How do you know if that's working for you? And they'll, well, I have so-and-so uh, keeping track of it. I'm like, oh, are they Google Analytics certified? Are they an expert? And they can, they, you know, can tell you exactly what's going on with every single vendor. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, probably. Uh, they don't really tell me about it, though. And then I would say, well, what is your marketing spend? About 50000 which is roughly where most people are, give or take. Mm -hmm. uh, and they would say, yeah, yeah, I'm spending about $50,000. And then I would say, well, would it be worth $269 a month to make sure that you're getting the highest ROI possible for that $50,000? Are you that sure that you're not willing to spend 269 to be sure? Uh, and then they would say, wow, 269 that's not much. You know, what do you do for that? And then at that point, I can explain to them uh, the analytics part of what we do as well as the, uh, the website monitoring part of what we do. Um, you know, you basically have to keep your website in tip-top shape um, if you want to play in the SEO game because if not, you'll be nowhere to be found online. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a pitchy, salesy kind of person. I'm a relationship kind of person, so I would just have a QA and a with them. 30 second Q&A, but you know what? You could say the right things to get their interest and provoke mm -hmm. further communication. I, I like that. So when you do approach a dealership that's having some issues, and we don't want to get into the heavy duty attribution area here, but what does your checklist look like as you try and ascertain their needs? Now, some of it might be obvious and some of it may not be, but there are probably some main KPIs that you feel best represent the effectiveness of 
any digital campaign and certain kinds of metrics that are indicative of success. So what would you what would what what would you ask them and then what are some of the KPIs that you would consider most important uh, in their digital marketing campaigns? Well, for sure, for me, every program starts with the bounce rate. So if the traffic coming to your site is bouncing at a really high rate, then nothing else that that vendor is trying to do for you is going to work. Um, so depending on what the program is, you know, email campaigns tend to have a higher bounce rate, so we give them a little more leeway. Uh, but anything over 50% should raise a red flag. Uh, that tells me that they're not targeting the right audience for your brand. Um, you know, I've seen some programs that are bounced in the high 90s, and the clients have no idea that they're throwing thousands of dollars away on clicks that don't stay on the site. And it breaks my heart because I know how hard these guys work for this money. So that is far and away the number one. That's where I start. So mm -hmm. if the bounce rate is under control, the next most important, and it's a very close second, is the conversion rate. So the conversion rate only applies if they've got specific lead form goals set up in their analytics, meaning these are things that we're telling analytics, we want you to specifically keep track of when people fill out this form or engage the click to call. Mm -hmm. So that gives us a baseline for the leads that are being generated by that uh, vendor source. So that one is huge because again, they can send me a million clicks and then they bounce at 20%, but if I don't get a single lead out of it, what good is that to me? I can't sell a car to someone who's looking at my VDPs. You know, I don't know who they are. So it, it all depends on what the vendor has promised. So, you know, if the vendor says, oh, you know, we do huge VDP views. Okay, fine, then I'll judge them on that metric. If they say, oh, we convert to leads, I'll judge them on that metric. So everybody gets a chance to put their best foot forward and be judged on what it is that they claim that they'll bring. Um, so, you know, we keep an open mind. Not everybody's doing the same thing. Not everybody can do it as well as everybody else. But for me, that those are far and away numbers one and two. Well, I have a question along those lines. Where are dealers missing the boat with digital marketing, in your opinion? What kinds of vendors do most of them bring in, but, you know, they just don't seem to produce like you think they would or should? You know, I, I don't want to call out any particular company, um, but I definitely find that most dealerships are not holding their vendors accountable. Um, either they don't know how to read analytics to hold their vendors accountable, or they just trust every glowing back-end report that the vendor gives them <laughs> that says, oh, yeah, we're the greatest mm -hmm. thing ever. Look, we say so. That means nothing to me. Uh, that's why I like Google Analytics. They're totally impartial. They are beholden to no one. They don't care who you are, where you come from. It's raw data, and it doesn't lie. So um, for me, it's don't let them off so easy, you know, especially the big names. A lot of vendors will hire a, a big name and think, okay, I'm set, and never check up on them. Well, some of these big names don't perform, uh, you know, and if you want to make the most out of your money, you got to make sure that you're checking your analytics and that they're delivering what they said they were going to. Well said. What, what separates you from the competition? What separates us from the competition? Well, and what competition say, is out there, really? I mean, what you're doing I mean, is are, pretty... There are some companies who do mm -hmm. similar to what we do, although uh, they tend to put a lot of superfluous extras so that they can beef up their monthly fee. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, you know, there's really, when you get down to it, there's only a few things that clients really need in order to uh, maximize their website. Um, but your question, how do, how do we, how are we set apart? So... I'm going to say it's actually two things. First of all is our objectivity. So what happens a lot in dealerships is they have an internet manager or maybe a marketing company or something like that handling their digital spend. So say you're an internet manager and some company pitches you and you say, okay, that sounds good, let's do it. Well, if they tank after the first month, your ego is kind of on the line and you're not going to go to your boss and say, oh, I made a terrible decision, these guys are awful, let's cancel them you're going to continue to let them ride because you don't want to look like you made a bad decision. So that doesn't come into play with us. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that if it's a marketing company, a lot of times they will get kickbacks from the vendors. So if the vendor's not performing, the marketing company doesn't really care. They'll give them a pass because they're literally getting a check from that vendor every month for having the client there. 
neither of these is a really good situation for the dealership to be in. We don't get any kickbacks, we don't get any incentives, we're purely data driven. And as we like to say, the numbers don't lie and neither do we. Our only loyalty is to our customers and making sure that they don't waste their money. Terrific, absolutely terrific. Oh, I think yeah. then the other, you said two things, Number right? two. Okay, so <laughs> I think number two uh, would have to be our team, our analysts. Uh, as I said before, these are not $8 an hour people that we plucked off the street. These are highly trained experts that we put on the phone um, with our clients one-on-one, -on -one, and they are available all the time for whatever our clients need. Um, you know, they are the ones who know the dealership, they know the client by name, they know the website, they know what goals the dealership has, um, they can handle all the reporting personally. And, you know, for the client, it's like suddenly getting a best friend who happens to be a Google Analytics expert. So and on top of that, I actually put a cap on the number of accounts I'll allow my analysts to handle because I never want them to be too busy to give that personalized one-on-one -on -one attention to every single client we have. Outstanding, well-spoken. Let me ask you to give us a couple success stories. Now, let's go back to dealer leads. I know there's some really interesting numbers. Um, I've spoken to Steve and Jennifer over there, and they've, they've said some marvelous things about the, the overall program and the feedback they're getting. There are an awful mm -hmm. lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of positive reviews. Um, how are you going, could you, could you share some with us and then how are you going to double down on that success with dealer analytics? Because the bar is set really high. The bar is really high. Uh, you know, the beautiful thing about dealer leads is that because they've only ever reported through Google analytics, we have years of hard data to back up showing that they are the number one converting vendor period for 2015, 2016 and 2017. You cannot argue with those numbers. Um, so success stories, uh, I have a million. Um, we had, last year, there was a huge downturn in auto sales. I'm sure all your listeners remember what a rough time that was. We had a client call us and say, things are looking bleak. What can you guys do for us? We don't have a single penny extra to give you. So, of course, we care deeply about our clients. We only exist to help them sell cars. So we took a look at our program, we made some tweaks, we looked around at their competition to see what they were doing, capitalized on the holes that they had, and we were able to keep this client at a steady sales pace for the entire like two, three months that things had dropped while everybody around him fell off a cliff. Mm. So he was the dealership hero, which of course he then told us, you guys made me the hero. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, it's, it's all about selling cars, right? That's why every single one of us is here to sell cars. And that is our only goal. Uh, I had another client, um, who was notoriously difficult to please. I mean, this guy was on his A game all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing escaped his notice. Um, he was very skeptical when we first signed him on. He signed on three luxury stores with us at 3000 a month, so his total was $9,000 a month with us. Six months later, he now has five luxury stores with us, and his monthly budget is $33,000. So I think that tells you everything you need to know about the effectiveness of what we're doing. Well, it tells me almost everything, but this is my favorite question. Oh, yeah, and there's some music in the background there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of car do you drive and why? Oh my gosh, my car, my sweet little car. <laughs> I drive, <laughs> I drive a 12, I'm the original owner of a 12 year old Honda Civic Hybrid. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of reasons for that. Okay, so first of all, 12 years ago, gas prices were five bucks a gallon. So that was one reason for my hybrid. I'm super cheap and I don't like paying for things. So um, I got it for that. Join the I'm crowd. also, I actually am environmentally conscious and I didn't want to burn more gas than I had to. Mm -hmm. uh, so that factored into it. And the reason I still have it after 12 years is uh, because I have one child about to go into college and the other one right behind her. Mm. <laughs> so I love not having a car payment and she runs like a champ. So there, there it is. That's my car. Sound, sounds like me. Well, listen, Tracy, thank you very much for jumping on board with us. That's Tracy Castable. She is now a dealer analytics, formerly of dealerleads.com, one of my favorites last year, along with social ordeals. I'm Kelly Klein, and this is dealershipnews.com. This is the podcast. I am your master podcaster. 
Looking forward to speaking to you soon. Again, Tracy, thank you for joining us. And goodbye, Entirely everybody. my pleasure. A pleasure here.